I was just listening to an episode with Mike Tyson, you and Joey Diaz. And I'm like, here are two guys that are just absolute fucking like they've been <laughs> to the, the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And this conversation could go completely off the rails. And the way that you were taking these two guys, which are characters like Joey Diaz and Mike Tyson, I, I've never met either of them, but they, they, they seem like, you know, they're, they're these two forceful juggernaut characters and the way that you were able to navigate that so soulfully and kind of like a jujitsu where we were talking about before th- that I am as a podcaster and, and someone who's recorded about 150, 160 conversations. Now I, was, I listened to Hotbox and I was like, wow, Eben is super skilled. He's such a good facilitator. It's a shame what happened with everything uh, that we don't have to get into, but just, uh, last I heard when you released the video on YouTube, you had, you were no longer associated. It sounded like with hot boxing, but, but before I asked you some questions on that, I just wanted to make clear that it's coming from a place of love because I listened to a bunch of episodes when I first discovered it. And I really appreciated what you did on that show. I really appreciate that, Zach. I really appreciate you saying that. I mean, that, um, yeah, it was an incredible experience doing that, creating that show with Mike. And uh, that was a psychedelic experience in itself, you know, (laughs) coming in every day. And here I am with one of the most controversial athletes in the history of sports hate him or love him you know some people still hail him as the greatest heavyweight champion of all time other people are honest you know other people are like he's a fucking rapist he should be behind bars and it's just like okay it's a really interesting experience to be to spend time with a person like that who I found to be incredibly heartfelt, humble, had a really deep soul connection with Mike. And it was, for me, a constant process of coming back to how do I best serve this environment? Because yeah. my ego would constantly come in and go, Eb, you should have your own fucking thing. You should, Eb, you got to fucking, you know, Eb, you should speak more, Eb, you should, you know, and it would constantly be like, ah, oh, you know what? My job here is to make Mike feel comfortable enough to open himself up to share the way he did, you know, and I think that was really the value that I brought was I made Mike feel really comfortable and safe and able to share the way he did. And that's why the show was so good and what it was. Uh, that episode in particular, Joey Diaz, that was one of my all-time favorites. I mean, two, <laughs> two wild men, you know? <laughs> Complete yeah. wild wild tigers just unchained in the, in the room talking about all kinds of funny, hysterical stuff. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I mean, you know here we are I don't know what it is now I'm no longer there I've had a couple conversations with the the new producer who I actually like because they brought in Mike's business partners on his cannabis stuff Mm -hmm. during COVID at some point I don't know what the deal was I guess they weren't happy with what it was doing They, they wanted it to be something else and They didn't get me, it seems, at the end of the day, looking back on it, they never really understood me and my position. And I think they were even, to some extent, a little bit afraid of my connection with Mike. So they went and found a new production company and they hired a new team. And I had had conversations with them about coming back and co-hosting. Apparently, there was... They didn't tell me this at the time, but they had this idea of doing a rotating co-host situation, which I'm, I'm not really interested in at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I had some, I had some good conversations with the new head of the new production team 
and he he really stressed how much he he wanted me there and i appreciated that but at the end of the day man it was just like you know what i went there and actually recorded a podcast with jake paul at the new set and i was just thinking to myself you know i think i'm done here i think i've done my work in this space and it's time for me to go move on that's not always easy but for me the light my life has always been about following where the universe takes me and in my body it didn't feel right anymore Mm -hmm. being in that place you know i felt at one point i really loved it and i felt really connected to it And I found myself sitting in the chair, looking across at Mike, who I loved to death, who had given me a big hug. You know, it was great to see him after a long time apart. And I just thought to myself, you know, I'm just not meant to be here anymore. It's time for me to move on and do my own thing. Yeah, that that was a kind of a wake up call and, and maybe even a future lesson for myself about the disconnection between the corporation or the the business minds behind a, a, a product or a piece of art and the actual product or piece of art itself. Because mm. the first thing I, I paid attention to, I was like, all right, I wonder what other people are saying about this. Cause you know, I, I loved you on there. I, I was disappointed when I turned on the first episode and I was like, that's, that's not a, uh, that's not Evan. What's going on here? And people in the comments were saying similar things, like not really malicious, like what, you know, this show sucks now, but it's more like, yeah, I really appreciated Eben's presence on Apple podcasts, YouTube comments. And I'm like, do the people that make this show, like the, the investors or the, not make the show cause you make the show, but like the, the people that are the business right. heads, like the big money behind it, do they not read or watch the episodes? Do they not know what's, going on because if they even watched a half of an episode they would know okay this guy is a good idea this guy should (laughs) you know this is a great product this it's it's a great conversation and it's a thing that people enjoy well it's really interesting man the whole show was about deconstructing the ego and at the end of the day the realization was he mike is surrounded by a lot of people who are stuck in their ego and have all kinds of ideas about what it should be and what it should look like and and what's good and what's interesting and no i mean for the most part i don't think they spent a lot of time watching the show i don't think they really because we created something that was extremely culturally significant to create a show because anybody can really throw together a podcast with a a historical icon like Mm -hmm. that and it could be entertaining and it could be sort of a celebrity talk show because everybody wants to come and talk with mike so it was really interesting to have that access i mean you know man i got to hang out with everybody from tony robbins and snoop dogg to ll cool j and fucking joey d like legendary humans And that was amazing. Um, But the difference with this show and why people fell so much in love with it, which I don't think the people surrounding sort of from the business side understood was that this is profound to have a guy like Mike Tyson speaking about these issues, whether Mm -hmm. it was masculinity and sexuality or his shame and guilt about things he had done in his life and things he had experienced and the darkness and death and all of that it made something that was really special and they i don't think they really understood what that was you know for better or worse they didn't get it and they had their own ideas about what it was supposed to be um You know, the other thing I will say, I had one more thing I wanted to say about that. Um, Yeah. I forget, but that was about, you know, that's about it. They didn't really under, they don't really understand it. And they're taught there. They have a whole idea about what it is and what they want it to be. And, you know, that's, that's kind of how it went. 